load faster, YouTube. All right, we have 30 seconds. And my computer is synced with NTP, John. <laughs> No. I can perform some illusions for you. All right, I'm going to get started. Hello. Hi. Good morning. It's 3.30. Good morning. Um, so I'm Sean Moore. I work for Infinity Interactive. And I'm here to talk about D-Trace. So I freaking love printf debugging. Right? You guys do too? Can I get an amen? OK. A couple of you. Sometimes I feel like any problem could be solved with thoughtfully placed printf debugging. I've never been a big fan of debuggers like GDB or the Perl debugger. I feel like they kind of get in my way more than they help. Um, but printf has got my back. So when I'm debugging a problem, this is my seven step process for uh, fixing it. So I stop the program, then I think really hard about what happened, and I try to make a guess as to what's going wrong. So I add some print statements, and then I start up the program, um, cause the problem to happen again, see what comes out. And then it usually takes a few, step, a few iterations of this loop, but few uh, feedback loops. I always get there in the end, though. But this only applies to like 99% of the problems you run into. Uh, there is still 1% uh, exact numbers here of problems that this doesn't actually work for. So I want to highlight two of these steps, which are stop the pro program and restart the program. And that's not always an option. What if the problem is running on some critical production server? And you can't just stop the server, change the code, push it, deploy it, and then restart. Um, your sysadmins who are already pretty grumpy and overworked are probably going to get grumpier at you. Um, and then I'm going to take a break to eat a piece of cookie while you read that. I'm not seeing any nods. OK. John, you got me back. I also want to talk about this problem. Uh, what happens when the problem actually takes days or extremely unusual circumstances to uh, actually appear? Sometimes it's not always trivial to uh, directly replicate a problem, but you'll know it when you see it. And for these two uh, situations, I usually turn to D-Trace. So here's the one line sum here's the five line summary of D-Trace. Sorry about that. Uh, it's an instrumentation tool, so it tells you about interesting events in your system. And you can use those for both uh, profiling to improve your code and debugging. It's scriptable, uh, scriptable which, <laughs> which is how you tell Dtrace what events are interesting to you. It's full stack, meaning you can instrument everything from your Perl application down to the Perl guts itself, to Nginx, to Apache, to your kernel, to the device drivers. Um, and you can instrument each section separately, or you can kind of take them in the gestalt. Florian, how was that? Uh, so you can uh, kind of correlate how your Perl application and your database are working together to pound the hard drive. Uh, it's runtime, meaning you can instrument programs as they run without any modification or special compile flags or special runtime flags, or even restarting the program. You can uh, hook into a running program and debug it there. And finally, it's production safe, meaning you never have to worry about it crashing your system or uh, even kind of causing uh, slowdowns. It's very low overhead. So the way I kind of think about D-Trace is like the best last resort. Um, it's never the first tool I reach for. Usually that's Google. Um, you know, if you get an error message, just Google the error message. Stack Overflow is probably going to explain what went wrong and how to fix it. Um, but when I exhaust all the tools like NYT Prof and Charles Proxy and even Printf, uh, I reach for Dtrace. And as good as Dtrace is, it's not going to fix this one. You still have to think very hard about your problem. So 
I want to spend the rest of the talk talking about uh, specific problems I've run into and solved with Dtrace to kind of give you an idea of what it can do and where it might fit into your life. So here are the problems. Okay, thank you for coming. <laughs> All right, the first problem was we were having a, a test fail because of internationalization. And I run my system in Japanese, and this is what I was seeing out of my test results. Um, that actually says public key not found in Japanese. So that much is right, but obviously uh, string matching is not going to understand that that's the same thing. Um, and it's not that I was the only developer using a language other than English. We had a Russian guy in the project too. So our I, uh, internationalization was still working. It was just failing oddly for me. And in particular, this string doesn't actually occur in the code base. Um, so that was a little bit weird. Uh, it looked like the translation was being provided by GPG. So that really narrowed down where the problem could be. Um, but the, the Russian guy wasn't seeing this kind of problem. So the real question was, how come GPG knew to use Japanese? I almost said Nihongo, but pull it back a little bit. <laughs> So my, my first thought was maybe some kind of system call that GPG was making to figure out what language it should use. Um, because the, the project we were working on actually controlled what environment variables that GPG got. And obviously the environment variables on my system would be the same as on the Russian guy's system. So that wasn't the problem. So I assumed uh, as a first pass it might be syscalls. So what would I do? I instrumented GPG syscalls. Um, and it turns out that GPG was opening up a file in my library directory. Um, it was a plist file. So it was very obvious that it was an OS X issue. Um, the other guy was using Linux, so that was the problem. And then that led me to figure out that, OK, so if we pass the environment variable LC all as a blank, GPG will inspect the system to figure out what it should be using. If we specifically pass Japanese, of course, it'll give you Japanese. But if you ask for English specifically, it'll give you English. Um, so that's the fix that we made. And that stopped Dtrace, uh, sorry, that stopped GPG from uh, trying to give me Japanese. So I know what some of you are thinking. You called Dtrace the best last resort. Why didn't you just use strace? <laughs> well, actually, I did. Um, so there's a program called Dtrus, which is a descendant of Truss which is kind of the Solaris um, OS X uh, strace uh, program. It actually uses dtrace under the hood to um, tell you about all the system calls that the process is making. And one way that this is so much better than strace is I told it, tell me all the sys calls that any GPG process is making. So I didn't have to specifically stop the process, pull out its PID, and inspect that particular process individually. I could just say, hey, whenever GPG does something, let me know. Uh, which meant I didn't have to stop GPG as, as it was launching, which might have been too late, or even edit a single line of code. And when I was reading the strace man page, I noticed this little tidbit. That's a hell of a rebase. Nobody appreciates that uh, in 1991, this uh, fork was from like a year ago. Whereas today, you want to be like on the right commit. I don't know. I thought that was cool. All right, next problem. We we're uh, writing a small static file server for a, uh, as part of a bigger project. And the server was pretty much just a thin wrapper around Plaque app static. So just loading files from disk and serving them. But we noticed it was really slow. Like really slow, like five seconds for a single request. Um, and this happened both from a web browser and from curl. Um, and this was actually happening on a few machines, including mine. And you know, this is obviously unusably slow. Um, so I tried tools like NYTProf and IOTOP to figure out where this was getting hung up, um, but not really making any progress. Everything looked super fast from Perl's perspective. Um, and I used strace to try to figure out what was going on. Uh, so I got pages and pages of mAdvise system calls, uh, which is not really useful. Um, so I instrumented curl to figure out what was going on wrong. This is what it was doing. It's just playing with memory. Um, so what can we do now? Well, obviously, you profile the kernel. 
<laughs> so the nice thing about dtrace, you don't have to restart your computer. You don't have to recompile your kernel to profile the kernel. You just turn on dtrace and it starts going. So my tactic was every uh, 1,001 millisecond, microseconds snapshot what the kernel stack trace was. Um, and then hopefully we'll see why it's taking five seconds to load this page. And we ran this and it turns out it was idling for five seconds. Well, that's not really useful either. I can't really act on that information. So new plan. Um, so it seems like something was waiting for something to happen. Uh, so the fact that every request was taking just a hair over five seconds was suggesting to me that there's like a five second timeout somewhere that was kicking in. Um, so my next tactic was as soon as curl becomes blocked, as soon as it leaves the CPU or something, capture its stack trace. And then maybe that'll tell us where it's being, it's spending its time. And the first, uh, the heaviest stack trace was using DL open, which is just for loading dynamic libraries like DLLs. So that's not slow because every curl invocation would be slow if this were slow. And then the next stack trace was actually very interesting. Um, you can see a lot of references to DNS here, and in particular something called MDNS, which I wasn't familiar with. Uh, but now that we have this new piece of information, we can kind of restart our debug cycle and go to Google. And you Google for MDNS and you get this, multicast DNS. And the most important thing is um, it sends an IP multicast query message which times out in five seconds. So um, it actually occurs whenever you're using the dot local domain name, uh, TLD. So our fix um, was first of all, stop using that domain name. So uh, pinging localhost directly was super fast. And if we rename the dot local to dot CDN, that made it really fast too. So we figured out. Thank you, Apple. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we figured out by um, instrumenting our kernel and everything that uh, dot local is not something you want to use lightly. Another one line fix caused by dtrace. Um, so I was at a hackathon a few years ago and someone called out, is there a regular expression master in the room? I volunteered to help. Oops. <laughs> this is what they were seeing. So they were running the test suite and it looked like a regular expression was being recompiled every time it was matched, which was happening like 300,000 times, uh, which all those compilations added up to a long time. You can see that it spent two seconds making calls to core reg comp, which compiles a regular expression. Um, so NYT prof caught this immediately, but then where do you go from there? You know that reg comp is taking a long time. Um, what do you do? So I'm sure most of you know this. Uh, if you use QR, that will compile a regular expression once, and then it won't have to recompile it every time you match. But this code was using QR. That's interesting. What now? What would you do? Something with dtrace. <laughs> use dtrace. <laughs> Email Abigail. So we wanted more detail than NYT prof could give. NYT prof is for profiling Perl code. Um, it has some uh, knowledge of what's going on in the Perl interpreter, but we needed a deeper understanding of what's going on in the Perl interpreter. So what we did was we were taking um, Perl's own C stack trace every time this reg comp was happening to try to figure out what was going on. This didn't really pan out. We didn't really get anything useful out of that. Uh, part of it is because I don't have a good understanding of the Perl internals, so I'm sure that someone with like an encyclopedic knowledge of everything going on inside Perl would just like see what was going wrong. Um, but I'm just a guy that doesn't know what's going on inside Perl. I'm just a Perl programmer. So what I did was um, I timed how long each reg comp was taking individually, and then I charted it. Now that's an interesting distribution. So it turns out that, so what this chart is doing is it's bucketing based on how long each reg comp took. It tells you how many uh, reg comps took that long. So it's kind of giving you a histogram of how long each reg comp takes. And as soon as I, as soon as dtrace printed that out, the person I was helping was like, oh, I get it, okay. So what happened was one of these four regular expressions was doing something interesting. Um, and that immediately flagged the, pro the, the problem was one of these regular expressions. 
So the change that fixed this two second delay was adding question mark colon to this regular expression. How would you find that without dtrace or something like it? By the way, uh, of NYT prof, among many other things, uh, he likes dtrace just as much as I do, and I'm sure that um, uh, he would really appreciate this kind of feature in uh, NYT prof, this histogram feature, because averages lose so much information. I owe him a patch. I'm sorry, Tim, if you're here. <laughs> All right, last one. So I was approached by this gentleman who had a problem. He knew that he wanted to use dtrace to solve it, but he hadn't really learned it yet, so he asked for my help. For sake of protecting the innocent, I'll call him R Pumpkin. <laughs> well, that's kind of obvious. Let's go with Ricardo P. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Ricardo had a few files that he was monitoring. Um, and this is what you'd expect to happen. The contents like gradually increment. Um, so the first time you checked the file, it was one. Checked it again, it was one. Checked it again, it moved to two. Checked it again, three, et cetera. This is what you kind of expect to happen. This is what actually happens. So as he was monitoring the file, it would kind of revert back in history. Um, so this was obviously causing some problems. It was uh, involved with some important uh, work uh, process. So he needed to get to the bottom of it. So like any good programmer, he used like a thousand different tools to figure out what was going wrong. Um, and then he ended up at dtrace. Um, so the question he wanted to know was, which processes open or rename this file? Um, so you know, we use dtrace to figure this out. So dtrace script that um, tells you every time something touches this bar file. Um, obviously, if we write to foo, we get no output. If we write to bar, we get output. Um, so first is my shell opening the file, so that's zsh on the right. And then you see that MD worker is uh, looking at it, and that's actually part of Spotlight on OS X, the search engine. Um, so that's kind of cool to see that it actually updates real time. And then we tried move, and that kind of did some stuff. Um, and then when we actually ran this program on Rick's server, here's what we were seeing. This guy. <laughs> what the hell? We found it. <laughs> In addition to possibly a free Pobox account for life, I also earned a dollar bill. So Dtrace uh, is helping to support my family. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I used a bunch of tools to try to solve these problems, but none of them worked. But Dtrace ultimately did. Um, I hope that this kind of inspires you to learn a little bit more about dtrace, uh, maybe see how it can fit into your uh, debugging uh, tool chain. Um, so some resources, there's a dtrace book which I actually brought with me. Uh, it's pretty heavy, but you know, it's, it's really useful. <laughs> um, there's a dtrace uh, man page specifically for Perl um, that you should have already if you have a modern version of Perl. Um, and then uh, there's some training and stuff, and there's a conference related to dtrace. So there's a lot of stuff here. And I encourage you to check it out. Before I go, uh, it turns out dtrace is not just a development tool. It describes itself as safe per for production. So there's no real reason we can't use it as a fundamental building block in our applications. So years ago, I worked on the NetHack bot with a couple people you might know, like Stefan O'Rear, who went on to write um, Nietzsche, uh, Jesse Lures, who, I don't know, that guy. <laughs> he writes Rust now. Um, so we had this NetHack bot. Is this playing? And it's playing NetHack. Uh, and it's actually playing NetHack at about one, maybe two, three turns per second. Um, we spent a long time trying to optimize this to figure out what was going wrong. And we kind of couldn't figure it out. We just kind of chalked it up to Perl being slow and Moose being slow. Maybe not Moose being slow. I don't want to light that fire any more than it is. <laughs> um, this is like 25,000 lines of Perl, so we didn't want to just like get rid of Perl and write it in C or Rust, which didn't exist at the time. Um, so what we did was uh, we had this weird code to kind of interact directly with NetHack to get its output and to produce input for it. Um, and it was basically like, 
using like a sleep to wait for NetHack to give us output. Um, but then I realized I could teach this NetHack bot to use dtrace to tell it when NetHack is, to have it tell the bot when NetHack is ready for input. Uh, so this is how fast it is now. <laughs> it's like 10 times faster. It went from like boring to watch to significantly faster than human players. Um, it, obviously, if you're writing like an AI, this is a huge boon to like productivity and debugging and experimentation and excitement. Uh, games finish in minutes rather than hours. Um, so that was pretty cool to use Dtrace for that. It has not ascended. It's not even close. This is what the code looks like. If that looks interesting to you, come see me. Um, it's actually really cool to watch this stuff run. He like puts on a ring of invisibility to fight monsters and then takes off when he's done because you don't want to be invisible when you don't have to. Let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for your attention. Unfortunately, I'm over time, but I'll take one quick question. Mr. Rogvitz. Um, so, D-Trace looks really neat, uh, but my production servers have to run on Linux, as do my development VMs. Are there similar tools that exist on, on other platforms? Yeah, so you could deploy Solaris. <laughs> Next question. No, uh, there's actually a relatively recent tool that came out called Sysdig. That kind of gives you uh, some of the same benefits as Dtrace for Linux. So I definitely check that out. Unfortunately, I don't know too much about it. FreeBSD, yep. All right. Thank you.